Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic functions and transformations. So in the previous video we introduced exponential functions and then at the end of that video we got to what was a logarithmic function because logs are the inverse of exponential functions. So now we're just going to look at some of these graphs. The first function we're going to graph is y equals e to the x. Now if you've never seen e before, e is just a number. And here's one way to think of it. You know the number pi? When you hear the, the number pi, most people know that it's a number and they, they might even know that what it is about. It's about 3.14. So when you hear e from now on, just think it's a number. e is about 2.718. Okay, if that's too much, you could just say 2.7, if that helps. Okay, so E is the natural number. So it's a very important number, it comes up often, it is the natural number. And if on your calculator you've never dealt with that button before, it is a button on your calculator. So E is right there for my, mine, I'm going to just go ahead and say E to the first power. So it's about 2.718. Okay, that's the exponential number E, natural exponential number. So I'm going to graph this function 2.718 to the x power. So if that helps you, we can write it like that. 2.7, we'll just, we're going to round down right here, just so you can see it. It's about 2.7 to the x. In the previous video, we graphed 3 to the x. So this is going to behave very similar to that, because we're not too far off from 3. I'm going to just pick a few x values. I'm going to start with 0 in the middle of my table and I'm going to pick 1 and 2 and then negative 1 and negative 2 and let's just plot these points after we calculate what y is so e to the 0 is just 1 any number to the 0 is 1 except 0 to the 0 so I plug in 0 and I got out 1 which is about right there e to the first power is just e which is about 2.7 2.718 so I plug in 1 and I got out about 2.7, so almost 3, so about right there. Plug in 2, that's e to the second power, which is e squared, which if you use your calculator here, let's go ahead and plug that in, e to the second power is about 7.4, if we do a little rounding. So about 7.4, that's just going to help us graph more quickly. So I plugged in 2, and let me go up on my grid here, 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're roughly right there. And then let's go negative. e to the negative one, remember what you know about negative exponents, this is just saying move the base. So e is technically in a numerator right now, so the negative exponent is telling you to move your base, so we're going to move it to the denominator. Then that minus sign comes off and then you just have 1 over e. So 1 over e is about 1 over 2.7 and if you want a better decimal for that, that's around 1 half, a little bit uh, off, but let's do it very specifically. 1 over, oops, 1 divided by e to the first power, that's about 0.4 roughly, okay? So plugging in negative 1, we're getting out 0.4 just about and then let's plug in negative 2, e to the negative 2, move your base, e is going to go to the denominator, and the 2 becomes positive, the minus sign comes off. So this is 1 over e squared, which is 1 over 7.4 roughly. So 1 over 7.4, but let's get a good estimate with the calculator, 1 over e squared, about 0.14. So like about 0.1, pretty low down here. Okay, now when I draw this graph, if you remembered what exponential graphs look like, then this is something you probably expected to see as far as the shape goes. So there is our function. This is the function e to the x, y equals e to the x. And this is an exponential function. It starts off real slow and then it just shoots up. It grows exponentially. And if you remember from the previous video, 3 to the x, it looked very much like this. Okay. Now, is there an asymptote on this graph? 
Yes, this graph will never go lower than the x-axis. So y equals zero, which is the x-axis, is a line that we will never cross because my graph will never go under my pin here. Since any number you can possibly plug in for x, when you plug it into the exponent, it's never gonna turn this number 2.7 negative. It might put it in a denominator, but it will never turn it negative. So it's actually never gonna cross this. So the domain, you can plug in any x you want and you're gonna get a real number out. So the domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. And you can tell from the picture of the graph. We have gra graph going all the way to the left, negative infinity, and graph going all the way to the right, positive infinity, with no holes or anything. The range, if you look at your y values, if I put negative infinity down here for y and positive infinity up here for y, there's no graph down here at all. There's no graph anywhere below the x-axis. So our graph starts up here and goes up to infinity. So it goes all the way up to infinity, but it starts right above the x-axis, so it starts right at zero. And then it doesn't actually touch the x-axis, so you use a parenthesis if it cannot equal the zero, which it can't. We use brackets if it could equal. Okay, now the new part is the logarithmic function. And this function is y equals, it looks like ln x, which is right, what, that's what it says, ln of x, but what you say here is natural log. Okay, so you would read this as y equals natural log of x or the natural logarithmic function. Now what this is, it's the inverse of e to the x. It's the exact opposite of the graph that we just drew. So what we can do, because this is the opposite of our function we just drew, is we can take a shortcut and take the values we just worked with and swap them. So originally our x values were negative two to two, so now those become our y values. And then all of the y values we got out of our function become our x values. That's what we would plug into natural log of x to get these y values. So initially we plugged in zero and got out one, so now if we plug in one, we'll get out zero. And I'll verify for you. So if I plug in natural log of one, I get zero, okay? We had plugged in one and we got out e, so now if I plug in e, which is about 2.7, I'm gonna get out one. So if I verify for you, natural log of e is just one, okay? And that's gonna happen all the way down. So e squared is where we got, what we got um, when we plugged in two, so seven, that was about 7.4. Let me fill in the rest of this table and then explain a little bit more about this function. Okay, so I filled in the rest of our table with just the opposite of what we got from before. We had plugged in negative two ori originally and we got out about 0.14. So now we plug in 0.14 and get out negative two and so on. Now this function, let me explain really quick we have y equals natural log of x. It really can be written like this to make more sense. Log base e of x. These are identical as far as what they mean. It's just that this is used so commonly that it gets its own notation. So natural log is the same thing as log with a base of e. And what this means when you see logarithms, what this means is that this little number down here, this base, that's the actual base. That's like the base of the exponential function. And then the way that you connect these other values is that e, the base, is raised to this exponent over here. In this case, y. And what it equals is whatever number's right here, x, okay? And so this hopefully makes sense from what we just talked about, that this is the exact opposite of our original function. So let me show you our original function real quick. Y equals e to the x. Well, the inverse, for inverses, you swap. You swap x and y. And so look at what we got from here. 
e to the y equals x. It's exactly the inverse of what we worked on before. Um, we won't go into a lot of detail about logarithms, but I just want to show you so you can get a, a little better feeling for it. Let me show you with some numbers that you might be more familiar with. So this is maybe a side note. Um, I'll just kind of write it randomly right here. So let's say I had 2 to the third power equals 8. If I want to write that with logarithms, I would write it like this. I would say that that exponent 3 is the logarithm with base 2, this base 2, of 8. So that's how you can relate an uh, equation or a function like this, this relationship, to logarithms. The base 2 to this power, this exponent, always equals this number right here after the word log. Okay, so that's, that's the idea of logarithms. And so logarithms allow us to actually solve for exponents. Notice y is the exponent in this case, and that's what the logarithm equals. Okay, so let's plot these points on our function. So we have 1 comma 0, plug in 1, get out 0, 2.7 roughly, and we're going to get out 1, so 1, 2, about right there, 2.7, up at 1, 7.4, it's not going to really fit on my grid, I kind of made my tick marks too big, but that's okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it's over here somewhere, and we would get out 2, let's go back to the smaller numbers, 0.4 is between 0 and 1, so 0.4 is about right there, and we got an output of negative 1, so that's here. And then 0.14, it's even closer to 0, and then we go down to negative 2 for our output. And that is our natural log function, that is the graph of it. Okay, so this is the graph of y equals natural log of x. And it is the inverse of the graph we drew earlier. It's the same graph, same graph, but flipped over the line y equals x that would go right in the diagonal right there. Okay, so let's answer some information about this. We have the asymptote on this graph is right here at the x-axis, the y-axis, excuse me. Our graph will never cross the y-axis. You will never be able to plug in anything negative. So x equals zero is the asymptote. And let me prove it to you. If I try to plug in a negative number into a, uh, a log function, watch what happens. So I'm gonna say natural log of negative one. Error. So it's not defined for negative numbers. So there, this graph will never pass this unless some kind of shifting happens, which we'll actually do in a few minutes. The domain of this function is all the x numbers. So the x numbers came from our original outputs for the exponential function, and they were always positive. And you can tell from the graph. This graph starts at like around x is 0. There's graph starting right after x is 0 and moving toward positive infinity. So the domain goes from 0 to infinity. That's our x numbers. We get really close to being able to plug in 0. We can't quite plug in 0, but we can plug in anything bigger than 0. And then the range, this graph goes all the way down from negative infinity up eventually toward positive infinity. So the range is all real numbers. Okay, so we're going to try some transformations in just a minute. Now look at what's happening here. This is an exponential function, y equals 3 to the x plus 1 power minus 2. It's an exponential function because the base is a number and the exponent has a variable in it. That's what makes it an exponential function. So we don't have to plot a bunch of points. We're going to use transformations to get this graph. We know from previous graphing, from the previous video, that y equals 3 to the x, I'll just really quickly draw it. It had the point 0, 1. It had the point 1, 3, because you plug in 1 and you get 3 out. And it had the point negative 1, 1 third, because when you plug in negative 1, you get 1 over 3. This was the graph of that function. Okay, I'll just label what I said. 1, 3, 0, 1, 
and then this point over here was negative one comma one third. So what we're gonna do is use this graph and this shape to just quickly graph this new function using what we know about transformations. So let me remind you, we learned about transformations before. There's a handful of them. And so here are the transformations. I just quickly wrote them down here. And if you have a function that you can, you know your, your next function is based on this, you can quickly identify what happens to the graph. So looking at what we're working with, there's no minus in the front of the term with x, so we can skip the reflection. There is, however, something happening with x. So notice what's happening, it's an x plus one. So that's this transformation, where x plus a number is going to be a shift left. Okay, so we have to take our graph, three to the x, and we're going to shift that graph left by this amount, which is one. So left one unit. Okay, that's our first transformation. Then we have a minus two back here, and so that transformation is a vertical shift down when we have the main part of our function minus a number. So that is going to be a shift down two units. Okay, so we can quickly draw our new graph just using these two transformations. So I know this is my shape of my three to the x graph, so I'm gonna take this shape and shift it. So we had zero comma one. We're gonna shift that left. So let me plot some values for you so you can see it. We're gonna take zero comma one and shift it left right there and then down two. Okay, so zero comma one goes left and down two and that points on our graph. Let's just do this two more times. Our original point was one comma three on our original graph. So one comma three was right here. And so we go left one unit and down one two and we plot that point. One more. We originally had one, negative one, and we barely were up at one third. So we're gonna go left one, so from right here, left. And then this one's a little tricky because you have to go down two and you're kind of in between tick marks. You're up here a third right here, this is the third. So we go left one and just estimate to your best of ability down two, which is about right there. Okay, now before I draw this, I wanna be careful because originally this exponential function had an asymptote at the x axis. We never touch the x axis because you'll never get out zero or anything negative from this exponential function. So my new exponential function that got shifted, the graph got shifted down to, so there's actually an asymptote right here at negative two. Okay, y equals negative two, so any asymptotes, yes, there was one. Because our graph shifted, our asymptote also shifted. And now when I draw, I can make sure my drawing is accurate. I'm not gonna draw my graph lower than y equals negative two. And there it is. So the overall shape of the graph is the same, but we did shift it left and down to make our new graph. And so the domain is actually all real numbers for any exponential function. That's not gonna change, but the range changed. Our original graph started at zero and went up to infinity. This new graph, the lowest it goes is negative two, and then it goes up from there to infinity. And it doesn't actually equal negative two, so parenthesis. Okay, we're gonna try one more here. Y equals natural log X plus two plus three. So natural log of X plus two plus three. So let me make this a little bit clearer what's being said. This is log base E of X plus two quantity plus three. Okay, so that's the same thing as what's written here. Now on this one, the parent function or the original graph is natural log of x. So that one we graphed just a little bit ago. So the parent function was y equals natural log of x. And let me quickly remind you of what that graph looked like because if we can remember that graph, we can quickly draw the new graph using transformations. So that graph 
was the inverse of e to the x, and so we had the following points. I'm just going to pick three of them. That graph had the point 1 comma 0, it had the point e comma 1, and that's e, which is about 2.7 comma 1, and then we'll pick one more point. We had 1 over e comma negative 1. Okay, and that graph looked like this. So it's our exponential function, but like flipped. Remember, it's that exponential function, but reflected across y equals x. Okay, so that was our original parent function. This graph is shifted and transformed. Let me remind you of our transformations. We have x plus 2. So that is another horizontal shift to the left. So because of the plus 2 in here with x, we're going to shift the original graph of natural log x, shift um, left two units. And then the plus three, f of x plus three, that's gonna be a vertical shift up this time, up three units. So shift up three units. Okay, and then that's gonna let us quickly graph this function. So I'm going to start with my original points and just move them. So 1 comma 0, let's start there. 1 comma 0. And let me just draw some tick marks in here so we can do this kind of precisely. So 1 comma 0 is right here where my pin is. And I'm going to shift left 2, 1, 2, and then up 3, 1, 2, 3. And that's my new point on my graph from this point here. We're going to do this two more times. 2.7 is here, comma 1 is here. So my pin is at the starting point. I'm going to use my transformations. I'm going to shift left, 1, 2, to about 0.7, and then go up 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, one more time. We're going to go from 0.4, comma negative 1, Point 0.4 is about here, comma negative 1, where my pin is at. And we're going to go left, 1, 2, okay, let me put my tick mark, 1, 2, and then up 3, 1, 2, 3, so about right there. Okay, now before I try to draw this graph, let's put in our asymptote. This log function never went past the y-axis. We had an asymptote at uh, x equals 0, the y-axis. So when we shifted left, our asymptote also shifted left. It shifted left to negative 2 for x. So this one has an asymptote at x equals negative 2. So now I can go ahead and confidently draw this curve of my natural log graph. And there's our function. It looks the same shape, like the same shape, but it's shifted. And so let's answer the last two questions. The domain of this function, the domain of a log function, we'll look at the graph. The domain is the x numbers. This graph has x numbers that give you points on your graph anywhere to the right of negative 2. So anything negative 2 or bigger can get plugged into this natural log function and negative 2 would actually cause an error. You can't actually touch this number so we are going to get close to it with the parentheses and not actually ever plug in negative 2. And I'll show you. Watch what happens when I try. So from this function here I'm going to try to plug in negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 plus 3 error. Okay. But if I plug in something really close to negative 2, like negative 1.99, that's okay. I get real numbers out. Okay. And then the last part is the range. This graph goes as low as negative infinity and all the way up to positive infinity. Okay.